Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course aspects of biochemical engineering. Now, in the last lecture, I started a new chapter that is the downstream processing. And I told you the downstream processing plays a very important role as per chemical and biochemical industry is concerned because whenever we market any kind of product that should be marketed in a purified form. And for the purification of the product, uh, you, we shall have to uh, have, uh, that you know pass through the different purification processes. So in this purification process, one most important thing that we have the solid liquid separation process. In the last uh, lecture, we try to discuss about the sedimentation process. We require we discuss about the centrifugal process. So and also we required we discuss about the membrane filtration process. Now, in this lecture in the today we will be discussing other different aspects of the downstream processing which is really in practice in the biochemical industries. Now, <clears throat> first uh, I want to tell you the classification of the filtration equipment. Now, if you look at the classification that uh, is the filter, this is the filter that we have and um, uh, that we have three different types. One is called pressure filter, and there is a vacuum filter, and there is the centrifugal filter. Now, if you look at a pressure filter, we have plate and frame filter press, we have meta, meta filter, and uh, vacuum filter, we have uh, the filter lip, rotary vacuum, rotary vacuum filter, and centrifugal figure, we have centrifuges. Now, out of that, I want to highlight that the plate and frame filter press is largely used in the biochemical industry. Rotary, uh, rotatory uh, vacuum uh, dry uh, vacuum drum filter that is also largely used in the uh, biochemical industry and centrifuge also largely used in the biochemical industry. Now, first let us consider that you know plate and frame uh, that filter press that we have. Now, question comes how the plate and frame, plate and frame filter press they look that uh, let me let me let me give you some idea about that that uh, uh, that you know that if you, if you look at uh, this is a plate and frame filter press plate and frame filter press now how it looks now we know uh, <coughs> that you know frame wooden frame that in our house we have window we have uh, we have door that uh, door we have this is the frame that we have am i right so this frame we can uh, we can have multiple of this frame this frame we can have uh, you know different frame we can bunch together that one after another that you know this frame we can we can have this this is the frame that we have and uh, uh, this uh, frame we can we can we, we, we can have several frames like this like this so in between the frames so here this is hollow am i right now we put some kind of uh, thick pot cotton pad that in between the frame and this since it is made of wooden we can make a hole in it and through this hole, we can put uh, some kind of natural bolt arrangement so that we can fix that. So, in between, suppose uh, this is a frame, and uh, here there is the another frame, and, and there is the another frame like this. In a multiple frame, we can we can bunch all together like this. And when in between this, we we we, we have one cotton uh, uh, pad we put inside that. And then we pass the liquid in between this uh, cotton pad. So what is happening? The liquid. Suppose this is a cotton pad with wrapped around, and if you pass liquid, the liquid will comes out like this. 
where like this you can collect and your 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 solid material will be will be will be depo, will be uh, accumulate in be inside this filter and when it is totally filled then you can find out that if you connect it with kind of manometer that you will find the pressure dro pressure drop will be very high and as soon as we have high pressure drop then you can stop the operation and take the solid out this is what is in practice in the bakers industry so this is how it looks this is the this is you can see this is how how uh, the different plates and this is the this is the cloth you know this is you can see that the, how the cloth is look this is the thick cotton pad that we have that is uh, that in between the plates we have and we pass the liquid like that so what is the uh, what is the basic principles of this plate and frame filter press is the surface filtration and here i want to point out one very important thing that when we go any kind of filtration process uh, we design the filtration process on the basis of the size of the particles now we know that in the biochemical industry we use different type of microorganisms and different type of microorganisms has the different sizes as for example bacteria their size is 0.5 to 2 microns am i right and yeast is about 3 to 7 microns and if you if you look at fungi it is couple of millimeter so naturally kind of filtration arrangement that we have for different type of filtration process will be different as for example for bacterial filtration mostly we go for centrifuge because particle size is very less but in case of uh, yeast filtration because bakers yeast fermentation process is the particle size is little bit bigger we go for plate and frame filter press now in case of fungi the since the particle size is about couple of millimeter we go for <laughs> rotating vacuum filter that i shall discuss so here this is mostly used for yeast filtration process that bakers is filter and other purpose also it can be used the slurry enters the frame i showed you by pressure and flow through the filter media and filtrate is collected <coughs> on the plates and sent to the outlet the number of frames and plates are used so that the surface area increases and consequently large volume of slurry can be processed simultaneously with or without washing this is the <coughs> main purpose of this particular plate and frame filter base. this is how it is look so <coughs> so liquid uh, this is thick cotton pad that we have and liquid entered like this then liquid comes out here and you drain out like this so liquid <coughs> you can see the liquid drain out uh, through this this is the liquid coming out and liquid in, this is the in and this is the out so uh, liquid and 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 all the solid material will accumulate in the, in between this and when you oh, it is totally filled up then there will be pressure uh, drop and from the pressure when you find out li large pressure drop it will stop the operation open this and take out the solid material this is how it looks now uh, what is the applications we have i i told you that uh, this is used in the bakers is fermentation process then uh, the food industry it is used mining industry it is used pharmaceutical industry chemical industry and waste water treatment process so different uh, we have uh, several applications we have the plate and frame filter press now let us let me come to the rotary vacuum filter where because we know that we have a lot of antibiotics fermentation process where we use the fungi i can i can give the example of uh, penicillin fermentation process where we use the penicillium uh, chrysogenum which is a fungal strain I, I i work with citric acid industry where we use the aspergillus niger that is also fungal strain the size is quite big so there we use <coughs> rotary vacuum filter rotary vacuum filter consists of drum rotating in a trap or a liquid to be filtered the technique is well suited for to slurry and liquid with large solid content and th that could clog other form of filters the drum <coughs> made up of 3 meter diameter and 3.5 meter length and give a surface area of 20 uh, 20 meter square now let me explain that 
and that uh, and this is suppose this is the drum and this is immersed in the trough this is trough in the trough we put the uh, fermentation broth like this and this uh, here we have pipeline this is we have pipeline like this and this drum this is like this this drum is like this and this is wrapped by the thin muslin cloth muslin cloth <coughs> what is muslin cloth that is the fine cloth this wrap on the surface of the drum now what do you do here we applied vacuum at the middle we there is a pipeline if we applied vacuum what will it is suck the the liquid and the cell must and this rotated at very low rpm maybe 1 rpm 1 rpm means 1 rotation per minute now when it rotates like this that <coughs> the solid material the cell must that will touch on the surface of the thin muslin cloth now here we have a knife thin knife that you know this knife touch the muslin cloth and and take the solid material out and it drop in this particular <coughs> maybe some kind of screw conveyor is there that will take the material out and put it in some other vessels or it can it can it can put it in the some wagon so this is how it is how this is in practice now principles of this rotary vacuum filter what do you call r b f this is rotary the in abbreviation form we call it like this now rotary vacuum filter works on the principle or function of filtering slurry through the sieve leak mechanism on a rotating drum surface under the condition of vacuum in addition of compression drying uh, using hot air the removing the filter cake are possible so what we uh, let me let me go to the exact photograph of that particular process it is like this mm -hmm. so you can see this is the drum and this is here you have fine muslin cloth you can see here it is fine muslin cloth this is the fine muslin cloth and here when it rotated and this is the trough in which it is immersed when and this trough is rotated at a very low rpm and here there will be fine knife which touches the surface of the muslin cloth and the solid material the cell must that attach on the surface of the muslin cloth that will comes like this it will drop down like this okay this gives a very, a very clear cut picture here this is the trough where the where, where we have uh, where we have the uh, fermentation broth and it is rotated at the very low uh, low rpm suppose here it is rotated in this direction so it's uh, the this is the central duct where suction take place and it suck the water and the solid material that uh, the cell must that added on the surface and this is washing water just to if some product is added on the surface of the cell must that also we we take care that should also come in the liquid and this is the dewatering zone this is remain out so that you know little bit drying of the material take place and this is the knife which touches the surface and take the product out now centrifugal filter that is a another type of filter it is consist of a stainless steel perforated baskets uh, and, and let me show you the figure then i think it will be very very clear this is this is this is the rotated at the high speed and then <coughs> the material will throw on the surface and here is a, here we have here uh, here we have perforated disc uh, basket so when you throw it the solid material that added on the surface and liquid will goes out am i right so liquid we can take it out from this outlet and solid material added on the surface of the cloth this is uh, it consists of if you look at it consists of stainless steel perforated basket typically 1 to 2 meter diameter lined with filter cloth the basket uh, coated rotates uh, rotates at a speed typically 25 per second and a high a higher speed tending to stress of the basket excessively the product uh, entered centrally and thrown outwards by the centrifugal force and held against the filter cloth the filter cloth will 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 not allow the solid material to go out the filter is forced through the um, cloth and and removed via the liquid outlet and the solid material retained on the cloth so i hope that the principle is very simple the application of this is uh, the preparation of aspirin this kind of medicine largely used uh, in the pharmaceutical industry 
uh, for medicinal purpose, uh, this for removing the precipitation of proteins from insulin and it is also handle the concentrated slurry which might block other filters. So, these are the different purpose where uh, this centrifugal filter may be used. Now, <coughs> the general technique of uh, for contaminants uh, removal from the liquid relatively to the size of the species to be removed. So, we have on the basis of size we can name the different techniques like if the if the size this is the size of the particle this is micron and this range point uh, this uh, 0, 0, 001 to 100 microns so if it is very small we have electrodialysis then little bit more it uh, reverse osmosis then ultra filtration micro filtration and filtration filtration we go for the highest size particles micro filtration usually range in between uh, in between uh, uh, 0 to uh, 10 microns. Now, this is uh, this is very clear here that uh, that uh, this is the <coughs> membrane filter and this is the ultra filtration, this is nano filter, this is RO, this is how on the basis of size of the particle we can <coughs> differentiate type of membrane that is used for the separation of particles. So, <coughs> this is a suspended particles that is removed by the membrane filter and <coughs> and then this is the micro macro molecule that is, is can be separated by the ultra filtration and then we have like of multi <coughs> valent ions that can be uh, separated by nano filter and ro can be say, used for the uh, for the production of the water that we use in the day to day life now liquid liquid extraction another uh, very important area in the downstream processing that uh, I, I can give the example of the penicillin industry that in the penicillin industry what is happening that uh, uh, that uh, penicillin that present in the fermentation broth and uh, when when you when you reduce the pH of the fermentation broth uh, to 2 then uh, then it is uh, more uh, solubility soluble in the solvent uh, layer that is the um, amyl acetate or uh, um, this uh, that you know kind of uh, solvent which is uh, which is not soluble in the uh, water. So, when you when you mix together then the penicillin will come from the aqueous layer to the solvent layer. Now, when it comes to the uh, solvent layer then what will happen in an aqueous layer you have uh, contains lot of un undegraded material or some metabolites. So, for, uh, since uh, this the solvent is uh, and this is invisible in the water. So, you can easily separate aqueous layer from the solvent layer and then again you increase the pH to 7 then again you water uh, you use then then solubility of the penicillin will be more in water it goes to the aqueous layer. Again you decrease the pH uh, then again it uh, goes to the sol solvent layer. So, like this we can purify it the product and and then then we can we use for different purposes as far as far penicillin is concerned we know the penicillin can be used in two different form either in the form of capsule or in the form of injection fluid when it when you go for in the form of capsule even a little contamination is there little little impurities is there we can can tolerate because it goes via your stomach but when it injection fluid no contamination is permitted the 100 percent sterility is to be maintained. Now, <coughs> let us see that how this uh, uh, this liquid liquid field extraction system works separate of two components of the liquid uh, by contact with a second Im immiscible liquid as a solvent. So, <coughs> the extraction is usually used when direct distillation is not economical. And since the solvent usually has the removal has to be removed by distillation. The extraction of penicillin from the fermentation broth by contact with amyl or butyl acetate that is one of the example recovery of acetic acid <coughs> from the dilute aqueous solution by contact with ethyl acetate or ethyl ether and separation of high molecular weight fatty acid from vegetable oils by contacting with liquid propane. This is a different application that we have in the liquid liquid extraction process. Now, liquid extraction method is on the basis of solubility difference of the component of the liquid. I was saying 
uh, telling you that uh, the, on the basis of solubility that we, we this uh, liquid liquid extraction process is used. The extraction operation of the liquid mixture is to be extracted uh, is called the feed and the solvent is, uh, is the liquid which contact with the feed for solute extraction. Extract is solvent rich uh, product of operation containing extracted solute and this is called extract phase. So, so we, this, uh, this can be very clear here. So, here, here see that this is the uh, this is uh, this is feed and this is solvent. Now, now in the lab, we can we know that how we do that. We have uh, that uh, separating funnel like this that we can put uh, two solvent together. Uh, this is the this is the, this kind of uh, stopwatch we stop clock we have. So here we can take the two solvent we can mix together by hand and then we separate out one one layer from other layer. But industry we cannot do it industry what we will do that we pass the liquid uh, and you know it is kind of wheel motion you know that we have like this uh, so that you know that uh, two, two layer will continuously come in contact with each other and finally then we dispose in the in the vessel so that one, then one layer will be separated from other layer we can separate one layer from other this is this is this is how it can be done uh, shown like this this is the feed one way and this is the solvent another way this is the contacting the separation then we do the extract <coughs> this is the extract that we have refinet that remains that we call refinet that uh, the uh, suppose we use the solvent solvent we call the extract and the refinet is the aqueous layer now theory of liquid ex liquid liquid extraction the refinet is the is the spent feed that while extract is the enriched with extracting solvent as 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 i told you that penicillin penicillin so in case of penicillin it present in the aqueous layer am i right uh, um, aqueous layer means so water it contains and another is the solvent solvent what do you have amyl acetate butyl acetate that we have solvent that we have so now what do you do when you when you decrease the ph to uh, ph we uh, yield 2 then, then when we mix together, then penicillin will come from the aqueous layer to uh, to the solvent layer. So this is on the basis of the the, the so refinet is the spent feed while extract is enriched with uh, this solvent. So solvent will enrich with the solute. The distribution of the solute between the refinate, refinate and the extract can be expressed in terms of partition coefficient. The partition coefficient now on the basis of partition coefficient actually we can we can uh, find out that how quickly the material that can uh, diffuse to the other layer so k is equal to c by cr c is the equilibrium solute concentration of extracting solvent and cr is the equilibrium solute concentration in the refinet and if the value of k obtained independent on the solute concentration particularly at low solute concentration so this is the uh, this is the how we can we can do the material balance suppose this is the feed uh, this is the feed that we have and, uh, and this is the polymer uh, salt that we have with the solvent and this is the refinate uh, this is the heavier phase and this is the lighter phase with the extract and this uh, if you do the material balance material balance will be f f r0 uh, we can f r0 plus R, RCR plus EC, EEC, this is a, the, then we can write that uh, extraction coefficient equal to K into E, K, uh, K into E by R, that is how we can find out this uh, th the extraction, uh, extraction that uh, factor the lambda can be uh, de defined like this. Now then uh, this equation uh, we can write in this form that uh, this is p equal to e c by f r o this is lambda you can we can here you can see the lambda equal to k e by r and this we use here then we can find out these equations now this uh, <coughs> this uh, problem if we look into that you know that uh, in the conception will be little bit clear 100 liters of the aqueous solution of citric acid concentration 1 gram per liter it contracted with uh, 
10 liter of organic solvent. The equilibrium relationship C equal to 100 into C r square, where C r and C is the citric acid concentration, the definite and the and the and the extract respectively, and R expressed in gram per liter. The question is that concentration of citric in the definite and the extract that we shall have to find out and fraction of citric acid extracted. Assume that volume of the feed equal to volume of the definite phase that is the assumption we made. Here what is the in the problem what is given C R 0 is given that 1 gram per liter E is, uh, is equal to uh, 10 liter R F equal to R equal to F equal to 100 liters and equation that is given C equal to 100 C R square. So, this is the material balance equation that we have already find then we can replace the C by this equation here. Then we can we can put the value of different values then we can find out the value of R C R we can find out and, and C since C equal to 100 into C R square we can easily find out the value of. So, one is the definite what is the concentration of what is the concentration of extract citric acid that we can find it out. The fraction of uh, citric acid extracted in the batch extractor B can be that equation already given before that we just put the value here we can find out the what fraction that can be extracted. So, this is how we can solve this problem. Uh, next is the adsorption phenomena that is another technique that is largely used in the downstream processing. Adsorption is a surface phenomena whereby component of the gas liquid are concentrated on the surface of the solid particle. Adsorption results from electrostatic van der Waals reactive with other binding forces between the individual uh, atoms, ions and molecules. Four types of adsorption distinguished from each other one is ion, ion exchange physical. Uh, chemical and non-specific adsorption uh, serve the same function as the extraction isolated isolating the products from the dilute fermentation liquid. Now, let me let me show you this that uh, ion exchange adsorption that you know that is established in practice for the recovery of amino acid, protein, antibiotics and vitamin. Physical adsorption due to van der Waals force on the activated charcoal is a method long standing for purification of citric acid particularly for the removal of color and chemical adsorption of organic uh, chemicals onto the charcoal or porous polymeric uh, adsorption is commonly used for the waste water treatment process. This is how adsorption can be explained this uh, we can uh, the the adsorbent is the material on which the absorption is. So, this is the material suppose we are talking about charcoal and this is the adsorbent suppose methylene blue. So, this is how it adhered on the surface of the of the material this is the adsorbent and this is this is uh, what you call this is the adsorbent and this is uh, uh, this is uh, absorbent this is absorbent and this is absorbent just adhered on the surface of the solid matrix. Now, this is the equation that we have that have adsorbent plus absorbent equal to uh, this is absorption and desorption. If you desorption then the material will comes out and absorption is added on the surface of the solid matrix. Now, this principle we can express by two different uh, isotherm one is Langmuir isotherm and the, 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 the friendly uh, isotherm that Langmuir isotherm this is the equation that we have and kind of correlation that we have is like this and uh, friend leaks the isotherm it is little bit uh, uh, the flatted the type of thing and the correlation is like this. So, we have two different type of correlation for different type of two different type of isotherm depending on the, the adsorption characteristics we can find out which is following in the adsorption process. Now, next is the evaporation. Now, if you look at evaporation main purpose is the concentration of liquid through a non volatile solid by boiling away the uh, solvent uh, that is the water. I can tell you that when citric acid we uh, because uh, after uh, I told you after hydrolysis of calcium citrate we get citric acid and uh, gypsum and this citric acid concentration is 22 percent and this we have to increase to 60 percent. So, naturally, naturally you have to remove of water from that and how you do it we do it very easily suppose this is the <coughs> this is the pipeline 
and here we, we pass the <coughs> citric acid and this is the steam we pass and then uh, we heat it to high temperature then we, uh, we, we put it in the big uh, like you know your cyclone separator type of things uh, tangentially is comes like this and then uh, the, the vapor will go out this is vapor will go out and concentrated liquid will go down. So, you will get the concentrated liquid like this. So, this is how it is the removal part of the solvent or the solution from the non volatile solid by because, because we know citric acid is a non volatile solvent. This is for concentration of milk fruit juice production of sugar citric acid industry it is largely used. Now, in the performance uh, the uh, it uh, depends on the capacity and economy. The capacity is the number of kg of water vaporized or evaporated per hour. Economy the number of kg of water evaporated per kg of steam feed to the evap evaporation and ratio of capacity to economy give the steam consumption of the evaporated per hour. So, this is very important the industrial point of view because how much uh, what is the money involvement is there. Now, different type of evaporator that we have upward uh, upward flow, downward flow and uh, we have upward flow. This is the one is upward flow, then downward flow and force circulation and agitated flame evaporator. The different type of evaporator is used by the industry. The next is the crystallization process when, when we get the concentrated citric acid, then I told you that we reduce the temperature to about uh, 10, uh, 10, uh, 10 to 20 degrees centigrade, then put it in a crystallizer where the crystals of uh, citric acid separated out. The, so, crystallization is the process of formation of solid crystal precipitating from the solution melt rarely deposited directly from the gas and crystallization is also chem chemical solid liquid separation technique in which the mass separation of the solute from the liquid uh, solution to a pure solid. So, I can give another simple example of, <coughs> of uh, sugar, sugar at high concentration at uh, uh, we, we reduce the temperature sugar crystals will be separated out from the liquid. If we just we pass through the centrifuge, we can uh, separate the crystals of uh, sugar from the liquid. A liquid we call it cane molasses and sugar we can sell it in the market as sugar crystals. We have several applications production of sugar, purification of drug, Im improve that bio availability, preparation of organic and inorganic API and manufacturing pure API by high yield. This is the different purpose we can use. And theory of crystallization first is the uh, uh, super saturation of the solution. This is to be done heating, cooling and salting and then nucleation then the, uh, the crystal growth. It can be uh, it can be explained like this that if you look at uh, this is we we, we, we we concentrated the liquid this is the dilute dilute dilution of the liquid then con when concentrated the particles are very close to each other then it, uh, it, uh, it coming here the ne then nucleus formation take place you know when the nucleus formation take place then the crystal growth take place this is how how the crystal formation that take place. Now, last I want to discuss about the chromatography. Chromatography technique is largely used for the separation of different component present in the reaction mixture and chromatography uh, is a solute fractionation techniques which relies on the dynamic distribution of the molecules to be separated between the two phases a stationary phase and the, a the mobile phase. The substrate are separated and differential uh, uh, the distribution between the two phases the differential coefficient uh, distribution coefficient will be concentration of component in the stationary phase concentration of component in the mobile phase. This is how we can express that. Now, uh, application we have several we have uh, biopharmaceutical production, biopharmaceutical and biomedical analysis, environmental analysis, diagnosis and the process monitoring. So, different purpose it is used. We have uh, different type of chromatography, we have gas chromatography, we have liquid chromatography. Uh, liquid gas chromatography is the eluent is the gas and liquid chromatography well, the eluent is the liquid. The eluent uh, that uh, fluid enters in the column and solvent that carries the analyte. So, suppose uh, this is you, you inject the sample 
which uh, and and this is the this is this is the element so you know that takes the sample to the column this is this is the column where the separation take place and then we have detected where uh, the detection of the molecules take place so uh, this is the stationary phase uh, the immobilized of the, uh, the support material inner wall of the column of the tubing example is the silica layer thin layer chromatography silica gel alumina and cellulose on a flat this is the different type of uh, material that is used in the chromatography so we have mobile phase uh, that uh, mean the basis on which the particle that we identify that is the retention time the after how, how much time that particular component separated in the by, by the the uh, adsorption column that we can easily find out that uh, first we inject the standard sample we find out what is the retention time then we 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 we, we, say we injected our sample and find out at that particular retention time whether we are getting any peak or not and on the basis of we can we can find out this uh, that uh, concept that that the quality the quali the, quali the um, quant quanti qualitative analysis we can find out but if you if you want to do the quantitative analysis then we shall have to inject the uh, definite amount of the sample and on the basis of that we can correlate what is the amount of uh, that you know uh, comp that uh, component present in the sample the uh, visual output because if you of the uh, chromatograph we can we can get the peak as i told you this is the peak we will get like this and and suppose you inject the sample here so you know what is the time here this is the retention what you call retention time and this is another retention time that we have this is this is another retention time so you this is for a b c so if you, uh, the more peak you get that means then these indicate that more sample that component present in the sample the different peaks uh, pattern of the corresponds to the different components of the separate of the separated mixture so this can be <coughs> represented like this this is why do you inject the sample and uh, this will get the peak like this so this is uh, this is uh, this is like this this is the mobile phase and this is the pump and it pass through this column and this is the detection from where we detect the sample and de detection mostly either potentiometric or amperometric so in this uh, particular uh, lecture i try to uh, discuss different type of downstream processing which largely use uh, both uh, chemical and biochemical industry i try to uh, pick up some example of the downstream processing which is mostly used in the biochemical industry i have given the example of platinum film filter paste which is used for bakers is industry i have given the example of rotating rotating uh, uh, rotary vacuum filter which is used for most of the penicillin industry where we use the fungi uh, i have given the example of penicillin uh, where we use the penicillin chrysogenum then we have there we centrifuges we use uh, for the separation of different particulate matters and then uh, there are other techniques that is also for the separation of the particles so we have adsorption particularly color adsorption we do by using activated charcoal then uh, finally i discuss about the chromatography where we can find out uh, the we go, this is mostly used for the analytical purpose where we can also for the separation of macro molecules we can do that that uh, that uh, there were different type of chromatographic technique we have we have gas chromatography with the high performance liquid chromatography technique one case we give uh, keep the gas as a mobile phase another case we give the liquid as a mobile phase thank you very much